And Badgie gets in behind, in on goal. This could seal it! Badgie! It's a season for the record books. Ten wins, no losses at home. The orange and blue still perfect at the Fortress. An eight-point lead in the race for the Supporters' Shield. The energy and excitement builds across the Queen City. Now the club looks ahead to its next challenge. Cincinnati, here we go. Good evening, everyone. He's Tom Gallarder, Tommy G. I'm Caleb No. This is FC Cincinnati Weekly. Tommy, the, the Reds have won 11 straight games. The Bengals won 10 straight games. Yep. Went to the AFC Championship the last two seasons. Now FC Cincinnati is just running circles around the rest of the MLS. <laughs> Everything is coming up Queen City right now, right? <laughs> winners, winners, winners. This city loves a winner, and they love FC Cincinnati right now. The best team in Major League Soccer, 43 points after the win on Wednesday night. And the second half gets kicked off just as the first half did, with a win at home at TQL Stadium. How about that? Perfect. Through yeah, the first, love it. Th through the first 10 games at home in the MLS schedule. After some much-needed rest, FC Cincinnati returned home to face Toronto FC. The club's now won five of their last six matches over Toronto, and FC Cincinnati came out as the aggressor despite missing, like, maybe more than half of what would have been the starting lineup. Oh, yeah, for sure. You could say six regular starters did not play in this game. The first 12, 13 minutes were a little bit frantic, right? And FC Cincinnati felt some things out. They calmed down, took a deep breath, and then the opportunities started coming. This one on a corner kick, Alvaro Barrial swings it in. Alvis Powell muscles his way to find the header, nearly sneaks it in. Greg Ranjitsing makes the initial save, and who's standing there waiting to poke it in? A poacher's goal for Santi Arias, his first in Major League Soccer, and a big moment for him. Yeah, the first of a few goals there. I mean, who knew that switching the lineup up, I mean, there was so much talk throughout the course of this season about yep. how does this team score more goals? Who knew that, you know, removing Brandon Vasquez, Sergio Santos, Brenner, if you want to mention him, yep. from the lineup would lead to a three-goal match yeah, for FC Cincinnati. I, look, yeah, I don't think people expected it, especially on a set piece, right? We saw the corner kick. Kevin and I talked about it on the broadcast Wednesday night. There wasn't much height on set pieces. The only person over six foot tall in the starting lineup was Ian Murphy. Uh -huh. Normally you have Brandon Vasquez, Matt Miazga, Yerson Mascara, who fit that bill as well. So they didn't have as much height, but yet still found the way on the corner kick to get the early lead in what ended up being the game winning goal. All right, so FC Cincinnati takes the lead in the 35th minute, about 10 minutes before the half. Just after halftime, about 10 minutes after halftime, Luciano Acosta with his ninth goal of the season and a goal in his fourth consecutive game. Dude's on fire. Yeah, and it comes off the press. This is what FC Cincinnati wants. High pressure. It forces Greg Grand Jetsing into a mistake. He tries to clear the ball, but it lands right at the foot of Marco Angulo. He looks to his right. There's El Capitan. Luciano Acosta, watch here. Ranjitsing has to make a decision quickly. He has nowhere to go. It's Angulo, then it's Acosta, and all Lucho does is pick out his spot to find his ninth of the season. Well, and the pressure that you're talking about, it was happening all night. It's yep. not like they chose this specific opportunity to do this. It was all night long. Toronto right. continued to try to build out of the back like that. Why, why if you're Toronto, do you continue? Yeah to try to build from the back. I, I think Toronto is a team they've only won three times this year. They have struggled mightily, and uh, they just they just couldn't handle the pressure, right? And remember, that's their third-string goalkeeper. Their top two goalkeepers out on international duty. So Greg Ranjitsing had to make his first start in almost three years in Major League Soccer. He came into the match with a 2.2 goals against average in his previous MLS start. So this is a guy who had to make a decision quickly. It was a poor one in this situation, and Lucho made him pay. And you felt like two goals was probably going to be enough to win that game. Did. Why not pour a third on? Well, because you need an exclamation point <laughs> on the match. That's why, Caleb. And it came in the form of Dom Baji, and I love that Dom finally got that goal at TQL Stadium. Uh -huh. This is a guy who came in with high expectations for himself. He had some injuries last year. He did not score last season. He didn't score and really didn't see much playing time at the beginning of this year. We talked about it a few weeks ago. Got his first goal in orange and blue back at his former home. At Colorado, it was the game winner. Now he gets his first in the Queen City at TQL Stadium. And a really good moment for Dom. And you can see how much it meant with that celebration and that smile from that young man. Can we talk about the variation of how the three goals happened mm -hmm. on Wednesday? The first was a set piece, a corner. The second was off that pressure that we talked about. This one was a breakaway and a brilliant through ball from the captain there. It was a three great, different, yeah, very, yeah, very absolutely. Different three goals. different situations. And what I really liked, and we talked about this Wednesday night on the broadcast, is that it was set up on a restart, on a free kick right in the midfield, right? That's not a ball you're going to play in on a set right. piece. But Obina Wobodo kind of recognized 
that there was an opportunity to go quickly. So he stopped the ball as the referee's turning around, and you see it on the wide replay, and he quickly plays that ball to Lucho Acosta. Now Lucho with the dime to set up Baji, and then Baji uses his strength and his yep. muscles and his speed to beat the defender, Mabika, there and get into the 18. But it starts with Wobodo. Then just a brilliant job by Luciano Acosta, who was named to the team of the match day uh, alongside Roman Celentano. And then the finish by Don Baji. It's all class, and the party was on at TQL <laughs> Stadium at that point. As it has been so many times this season. FC Cincinnati became the second team in MLS history to start a season 10-0-0. Perfect through 10 games at home with their win against Toronto. The buzz is building around yeah. the town for the orange and blue. Uh, but as mentioned, the Cincinnati Reds, they won their 11th straight game on Wednesday. Head coach Pat Noonan understands that energy around town right now. It's pretty cool that they're winning games and you can see a new energy around that team. Um, we know what it's looked like with the Bengals and, and we're trying to hold up on our end to, to win games. But there's some really good energy in this city right now and, and you can feel, uh, you know, things turning a little bit and the goal is to continue to to push forward in a way where there's trophies at the end of all this it is good to yeah. be a cincinnati sports fan it, right it, now. it is look and and i went to the reds game on tuesday night and it was a kind of a rainy gray night yeah and i think there's twenty eight thousand people there and there was amazing buzz in the building at great american ballpark then wednesday night amazing buzz and 11 of the reds were there and and jonathan indian india pulls the sword right yeah. And he didn't just show up to do it, right? He showed up with 10 of his teammates. We're going to see it right here. And they were into it. Yeah. They brought the cape. They brought the helmet. Like, it was a really, really cool moment to see that many of the Cincinnati Reds on the field. And they were all into this. Jonathan was into it. And I think it just set the table for a fun night. Yeah. The, so the idea of the Viking cape and helmet and pulling a sword out of a rock. I mean, it's perfect, it right? Was Perfect. Like the, you, you take the tradition of the two dip, of the two teams, FC Cincinnati right. and the Reds, and you put those together, and it just seemed like perfect harmony there. Jonathan, and he, look at that—the the baseball. Of course. The, I, I, you think he could uh, rip an RBI single with a sword? He probably could. I, yeah. I, would I mean, so, I, yeah. I think there's no question about that. I think <laughs> we got to keep an eye on things this weekend. Do you think maybe the Rock and the Sword end up? At, at Great American Ballpark against the Braves. <laughs> he, they might, it might add that to their tradition when you hit a home run. He was under some major pressure, though, because FC Cincinnati was 1-0 when, when I you did it, yeah. it out. Uh, so big-time pressure now, there. 1-0 with, with Indians, Jonathan India. And, and he came through. Yeah, absolutely. Hard to know how the team was going to manage with several starters. We mentioned it, yep. missing from the lineup. We got the answer, though, in emphatic fashion. I mean, you look at the, the number of guys who were out last night. A look there at what the starting lineup looked like. Mm -hmm. But Brandon Vasquez was out, Sergio Santos, Junior Moreno, Nick Haglin, Matt Miazga, Yerson Mascara. You could throw Brenner in the mix, too. Yep. A ton of guys just unavailable. They call it six starters. Six of your ten outfielders, Caleb, yep. were not available for this match. And yet, Pat Noonan had time, granted, because of the longer break, to prepare his guys. And I know they worked on it the entire time. The plan going into the break was Ray Gaddis at center back. Ray Gaddis had started 232 MLS games. Longtime veteran in the league, 232 games at wingback or fullback mm -hmm. with Philadelphia and Cincinnati. His 233rd start came at center back, and he did a fantastic job. Alvis Powell was really good in the match. There were some partnerships that guys weren't used to, and they all came together, as I said. After that first 12, 13, 14 minutes, everybody took a deep breath, and you really saw the team come together. And uh, it, was, it was a wildly impressive win, one of the best I've seen from Pat Noonan. I called it the biggest test that Pat has faced as a head coach in a season and a half, leading the orange and blue. And he passed with flying colors. It's uh, absolutely egregious that he wasn't named to the team of the match day. Mm -hmm. match day. There's been 18 match days. FC Cincinnati's won 13 of them. Yeah. And Pat Noonan hasn't been named to the team of match day once. Something, uh, something smells funny out there. I don't get it. I, I, I've got an idea that. I don't think he cares. I don't think he cares at all. <laughs> I no, I, and look, if, if Pat was sitting here with us, he'd be the first to say, guys, it doesn't matter. But it, uh, look, we could sit here well, and yeah, argue right. it till we're blue in the face. That doesn't mean we can't care right. about it. it. It matters because he deserves the respect. And at the end of the year, yeah. I bet you he gets that trophy that says coach of the year. Yeah. As long as things continue and, and the team finishes strong over the next 16 regular season matches, there's, there's no question he's the favorite for coach of the year. Yeah. I just think it's kind of laughable that with all the success, he hasn't had one of those weekly uh, honors, which you're right. Don't really matter. He'll take the wins and the three points every night. I think he'll night. take that yep. every step of the way. Next up, FC Cincinnati travels to the nation's capital to take on D.C. United. Let's take a look at our match preview brought to you by Tri-State GNC Buick. The Orange Blue won 
the last two meetings against D.C., three in a row, not going to come easy. No, it won't. And uh, Steve Birnbaum will be out. He picked up a red card last time out. D.C. didn't play in the midweek match, so they have a little bit extra rest. And FC Cincinnati, of course, traveling today to the nation's capital to get set to play tomorrow. So... Uh, it's not easy. This is a good team. Remember, Christian Benteke, a very dynamic scorer. He had some looks in that match in early May that FC Cincinnati won 2-1, to one, and he has been very hot as of late. But D.C. has been middle of the table in the Eastern Conference. Right now they sit at ninth, so that's the final playoff spot. But it's a road test, and FC Cincinnati has to go get some more points and, and continue rolling here in the second half of the season. Yeah, and, and the lineup changes, challenges, I'll call it, will continue for FC Cincinnati. Matt Miazga and Brandon Vasquez have a game tomorrow. Yeah, they it's won't not be back. this game. No, they, they won't. They, those two won't be back. But there is a chance that we will see some guys back. Nick Haglin expected mm -hmm. to be back. Sergio Santos expected to be back. The hope is that Yersin Mascara is back in the mix as well. It sounds like Junior Moreno will not be available for the match. So uh, maybe three of those six guys we talked about back in the fold and available. That helps. Which would be a massive boost, especially on a short turn from the Wednesday win. Yeah. Uh, can we talk about Ray Gaddis real quick? I mean, yeah, of course. You, you talked about him to. playing center back there, stepping up in that one moment. Uh, Absolutely. Kind of taking up for his teammate and right. playing that new role, but stepping up for his teammate there and, and taking a headbutt, if right. you want to call, that, yeah. call it that, to the face. Yeah, there was, look, uh, that moment with Bernadeschi uh, in, in the first half when Alvis Powell got knocked down on the end line, and here comes Ray, the veteran, standing up for his teammates. And this is a guy who has all the respect of his teammates. This is why he was brought in out of retirement. Remember, this is a guy who didn't play in 2021. And Pat Noonan told me going into the match, I asked him what he wanted from Ray. He said, I want Ray to play like a veteran that he is. Mm -hmm. Sure, he's never played center back, but he's prepared. He knows what his assignment is. He knows what he needs to do. And I was wildly impressed with the job that Ray Gaddis did in the match, playing center back, as I, as I mentioned, 232 games yeah. in his career going into that one, had never played center back before. He told me he played it once in a reserve game, not an MLS game, in a reserve game. So his first real professional start um, at center back and he was so so good in doing it and and he's just a joy to have around he's he's a great locker room guy um, absolutely someone that commands so much respect but also translate out on the pitch and he was a big part of the win somebody had to take the place of Matt Miazga not just on the pitch but from With an emotional fire, fire right fire, yeah let's baby. go yeah and he, he certainly did that thank you so much Tommy Pleasure. you can always listen to Tommy and his partner Kevin McCluskey during matches on ESPN 1530 or on iHeartRadio you can also listen to them with an MLS Season Pass subscription on Apple TV when the orange and blue play at home. Just click on the three dots at the bottom of the screen and select Home Radio Broadcast. Appreciate you coming out. Yeah, always a pleasure, brother. Let's do it See again soon. soon. I think I'll be back next week. All right, we'll have you. Alvaro Barrial has become an important piece for the orange and blue. The midfielder tells us one key attribute to his football success and shares what he likes most about the Queen City. That's next on FC Cincinnati Weekly. Welcome back, everyone, to FC Cincinnati Weekly. He is a critical piece for the orange and blue and an elite talent in Major League Soccer. Alvaro Barrial tells us one of the keys to his football success and what he really likes about the Queen City. Let's, do, uh, let's take a look at our ProLink player profile, Alvaro Barrial. Empecé a jugar al fútbol a los cuatro años, si no me equivoco, en un club de mi barrio ahí en Ciudadela, en Buenos Aires. Cuando ya empecé a crecer, a los 15, 16 años, empecé a soñar con y a meterme más de lleno en el fútbol profesional. De, de ese momento cambié la cabeza. Mi papá, mi mamá tuvieron un gran impacto, mi hermano eh, y mi hermana, en apoyarme, en acompañarme y en... Creo que eso fue una de las claves para que yo haya podido llegar a jugar al fútbol profesional. Practicaba, me gustaba el boxeo, creo que me gusta el entrenamiento y, y me gustaba la, el deporte, entonces cuando podía en mis vacaciones o cuando, cuando tengo o tenía tiempo practicaba eso. No puedo hacerlo por mi profesión, pero me gusta 
el entrenamiento más que nada y, y el deporte. Creo que Cincinnati es una ciudad tranquila, me gusta por, por su tranquilidad, porque tenés tiempo para, para descansar bien y, y no preocuparte por, por muchas cosas. Tratamos de compartir momentos fuera del entrenamiento como para también para tener un poco de, de compañía entre todos ayudarnos, tratamos de ir a comer a algún lugar y entre todos después del entrenamiento, por lo menos una vez por semana. Un momento especial, creo que hubo varios, pero bueno, creo que mi primer gol eh, aquí en el, en el club, que fue en el estadio, fue el primer gol del estadio, entonces creo que ese fue un momento muy especial para mí. Well, FC Cincinnati is on an absolute tear, and fans have had their backs all along. The fortress has become quite the environment to face for opponents. Head coach Pat Noonan tells us why that energy and excitement at TQL is so important. The environment and the atmosphere that we've had on game day is becoming something special. The more games you win in front of your home fans, and, and the better that atmosphere Uh, seems the more people want to be a part of it and, and that's what the players have done with their performances is seeing the tension and we're really fortunate for the support and the backing that we've had to, to really give us momentum uh, when we play TQL. Hey, welcome back everyone to FC Cincinnati Weekly. The U.S. Open Cup has taken a couple months off, but don't forget, Inter Miami coming to TQL Stadium Wednesday, August 23rd for the semifinal round. FC Cincinnati just two wins from lifting a trophy. As we know, Lionel Messi joining Inter Miami. The team anticipates his debut a little under a month, July 21st in their League's Cup match. So we expect the greatest player in the world will be taking the pitch at TQL Stadium later on this summer. The Houston Dynamo and Real Salt Lake make up the other semifinal match in the U.S. Open Cup. Tickets for the U.S. Open Cup go on sale Friday, June 30th, FC Cincinnati is going trophy hunting, trying to make good on unfinished business from six years ago. Go to FCCincinnati.com to buy tickets. Well, it's one of Major League Soccer's most talked about supporter sections, a 3,000 plus wall of noise and color that the FC Cincinnati faithful call the Bailey. <laughs> Love to find the Bailey is the heartbeat of the entire club. The Bailey in medieval times was the section of a castle where armies went to prepare for battle. We sort of sometimes look at ourselves as the protector. We are the folks that just lead all the chants. It's not for the faint of heart. We are going to be as loud as we possibly can be. It just reverberates through your whole body. I highly, highly recommend earplugs. The mission. We are going to do everything we can to get those guys going and to win another match. And the pride. I think we even have managed to just really raise the level of fandom. Join us for an up-close look at the Bailey next Friday night on FC Cincinnati Weekly. Well, how about FC Cincinnati 2 getting another W? All four wins this season have come on their home pitch. Here's a look back at the 2-1 victory last Sunday. If you guys come in and put this effort all the time, why shouldn't we be successful all the time? But it has to come from every one of you guys, just to work. And today was very good. The collective was a good work effort. All right, we'll keep going. I will move, move forward. Okay, guys, good stuff. Well done. Good job, boys. Good job, boys. Hold on. 
Well, TQL Stadium isn't just for match days. It's the perfect backdrop for your next upscale or casual event, home to seven different club spaces. There's a perfect spot for any event of 15 or even up to 1,000 plus guests. Complimentary event with stadium tours, a Gary the mascot visit. That sounds cool. Full service event management, seasonal menu offerings, and on-site AV equipment. Come join us at what was named the best venue of 2022 by the World Football Summit. For more information on availability and booking, contact private events at FCCincinnati.com. FC Cincinnati Weekly. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone, to FC Cincinnati Weekly. The next time you can catch the orange and blue on the pitch at home is Saturday, July 1st. They'll be facing the New England Revolution, who is still hanging around near the top of the Eastern Conference standings. Kickoff at 7.30 that night at TQL Stadium. Tickets are available at FCCincinnati.com. Thank you so much for watching this week's show. Join us every Friday night at 7.30 for FC Cincinnati Weekly, the most comprehensive coverage of the orange and blue you'll find anywhere out there. For Tommy G and the rest of our crew, have a great night and go FC Cincinnati.